Hi everybody, this is Bob Iacchino from Path Trading Partners along with Mike Arnold. Thank you again for watching. Quick AM Forex Path Chat. Currency markets, a little active overnight. We've got some interesting data. We had the Japanese tertiary index last night, which moved the markets a little bit. We've got the Canadian unemployment rate. Again, that's the Canadian version of the U.S. non-farm payrolls report coming out today in a little while, not too long, probably before we get this posted. We've also got the University of Michigan consumer sentiment in the U.S. And we've got the Baker Hughes rate count, which I normally don't care that much about. But crude oil has been in a pretty strong trend back up to the top of the range. So we'll see if the rate count affects it at all. I'm going to turn it over to Mike because he's got some interesting things to show you on the chart. Okay, thank you, Bob. So we got the Euro US dollar. We're now approaching another pretty significant level about the 106.20 mark, which is this key low from last week. If you go, let's go to a weekly chart really fast. You'll be able to see that is the low of this major up candle that left this long wick. This is a very significant level on the chart, so watch for reactions there. There's nothing we're really going to do on a longer term basis. We'll just look to do that on Friday, but for any of the short term traders, that's a level. If we get below that, your next level just happens to be another significant level, but it's also target 10601. So essentially the 106 level. And if you continue down, it's a 10585 level below that. Keep in mind this is on a weekly basis moving into a clear path. If it does unfold and we don't find a lot of, we'll find short term support at these, some of these daily levels, but longer term support on the weekly is not all the way back down until the 104.44 level, essentially the 104.50 level. So that's the macro view that you have to keep in mind on this, trading it from the short side. Now there's stopping points in there and we'll go as this pattern continues to unfold next week we'll update those as we need to pound US dollar this double top is not invalidated we've rolled back over what's interesting is we also have a potential trend line trade if we close below this trend line especially doesn't look like it's going to happen today unless something significant happens it with the pound if we close Beginning of next week, a close below this trend line is going to target the 123.47 level. It will also then trigger the double with the eventual full target of 121.51. If it's a two target trade, you can also target the 122.16 level. So we may have two trades in conjunction, which there are going to be separate trades and it does not increase the probabilities. There's just two trades there. U.S. dollar Japanese yen bounced up significantly to retest this trend line, poked a bit above it and collapsed back down. We have a lot of resistance right at this level. If we do get a close above this trend line, not doing anything today, but we'll watch for a continued move on Sunday night, Monday morning. Next target's higher, 114.24 level and then the 114.76 level are the higher targets. If it does move back down, we have pretty significant support at the 112.73 level. And there might be some minor support right around the 113.27 level. Another interesting thing to note on the yen is it came down and the bottom of this now candle, the wicket left behind was right at the rising 21 R rotation zone. So that is now we're attacking the top of the rotation zone, which is the declining eight. So we're sandwiched between these. So these are now two pretty critical points that we're going to be watching. Swissy, we're now sustained above this trend line. The next target was the defining point of the trend line, which was right about the 10044 mark, which we've hit, comments came in coincidentally with the flat 50 exponential moving average and the 37 and a half GAN level. So there's lots of resistance right at this point. If we do continue higher, the next major target is 10079 or the 10080 level, then followed by the 10102 level. High, those are the higher. If we dip back down, watch for, this is actually probably going to form 
a modified ice cream trade. So you're going to have a lot of support in around the 99.81 level and these upward sloping moving averages if we go lower. For, so watch for that. Aussie, we're watching on a weekly basis. Still for a close above this uh, 76.80 significant level. Uh, we'd have to do that today or we'd have to wait a full another week. On the daily, we still have the rising rotation zone, but it's not been enough to push it above that level. On the daily, if you do get a close above this level, you can short-term target about the 77.47 to 77.50 level. That's an intermediate target for a, a daily little trade. But we're watching on the weekly. CAD, so you notice we broke down from this bear flag, haven't done much. You know, we've rallied back into the big cluster of moving averages. Nothing to report here yet. We might be able to draw some trend lines in, but it's only going to give very scalpy trades because of all the possible support points in here. It's one of the challenges with trading a bear flag is on the way back down, there can be multiple reactions and key support points that you get moves off of, and it's hard to do targets and stops. You can do it more on an intraday basis, but for a longer term trade, you have to keep a much wider stop. So we can look at that in the future if the move continues lower. That's all I have for you now, Bob. Back to you. Thanks, Mike. We still are waiting for China's new yuan loans, which was data that was supposed to come out last night, didn't come out yet. China's reserves have fallen below $3 trillion. The reason I'm bringing that up is tune in on Saturday to the Money Path podcast, which we'll be recording in a little while, to hear Mike's opinion on the Chinese involvement in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin reached new highs this week. Uh, once the Chinese yuan reserves fell below $3 trillion. There's an interesting thing that Mike has noticed between Bitcoin and China's activities in Bitcoin, the Chinese populace. So check that out. MoneyPad podcast, a new one will be out Saturday. You can find it at our website, pathtradingpartners.com. You can also find that on iTunes just by putting the Money Path podcast into the search bar. And send us an email at support at pathtradingpartners.com if you want us to cover anything. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.